Yeah, that often? Yeah, you know, I used to go every weekend, but you know, back when I had my, you know, invisible jet. But I lost it. Stupid thing, blew it once and then I couldn't remember where I put it. But you find it. <laughs> yes. How'd you come up with the Iggy voice for Ergo Proxy? The Iggy voice. <laughs> well, it's just like, <laughs> I just come off playing Roy Mustang, who's like the most testosterone masculine character ever. <laughs> and they're like, okay, so we got this part for you. He's like a 6'5", huge metallic, uh, you know, guardian robot android thing that, you know, walks around and protects Riel Mayer. And he's kind of gay. <laughs> Sweet. So I was, I was watching some of the subtitles and he doesn't really, he doesn't have any facial expressions, he doesn't have any flaps, he doesn't really, you know, have any crazy movements except for one part where he's like, he's looking at the computer and he's typing and then he goes, oh, let's go look at some shoes. And I was like, oh, okay, now I know what the voice is. So everything just became real, let's go get some shoes. I don't know. Just kind of weird. He's a sweet guy. <laughs> yeah. Which would you better be Full Metal Alchemist? Uh, alchemist or Homunculus? Ooh. <laughs> Alculus? Well, Homunculus? I'm gonna have to eat like little stones and stuff to live? I have purple eyes, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Depend on my ability, you know? No. Like, Fire. what would I have? <laughs> They're an alchemist all the way. I have to be an alchemist. I mean, yeah, if I could wear little gloves and blow things up, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> Not a tough decision. Be like, dude, you suck. I'd be like, gloves. <laughs> now who sucks? <laughs> yes, in the back. Right. Um, yes, call that person back later. Um, I was an, I was I've been an actor since about uh, 1999, I think. Um, it was my senior in high school. I was doing one act in musicals and stuff like that. I'm going to barbecue your phone. <laughs> or I could talk to him. That'd be cool. I'd be like, hey, what's up? Click. <laughs> That's good. Um, I was a senior in high school and I got an agent in Dallas just for um, commercial work and, and, uh, and TV and stuff that was in the area just to see how I would do and uh, I started booking some commercials and stuff like that and then I went to TCU in Fort Worth, Texas on a musical theater scholarship um, and just decided to do straight theater instead. Uh, did four years of college and um, did some did some workshops here and there. Uh, did like one voiceover workshop just to kind of get used to a microphone and just using your voice as the only acting you know medium available because you can't use your face, you can't use your body, you can't use mannerisms. <clears throat> and um, that was that was pretty much it. I mean, I watched you know not well I guess anime and cartoons because you know Thundercats and stuff like that. But <laughs> I watched those like crazy. So when it came to um, actually auditioning for Funimation, I was, I was interested in the first place because I started watching Dragon Ball Z so much in college. And I didn't watch any anime from when I was like six until then. So I didn't, you know, I, I really wasn't part of the whole following. And, you know, I think we were actually in my fraternity dorm house and we went one channel past ESPN, <laughs> which was Toonami at the time, or Cartoon Network. And there are these big, spiky-haired, blonde people blowing each other up with you know, energy balls and stuff. I was like, what is this? They're all screaming and their muscles are getting a bigger. I was like, sweet. So when I, you know, I found out it was Funimation and that Laura Bailey worked over there, I was like, you have got to get me over there. I want to yell and scream and be all badass. Um, but I mean, actual training, uh, I think somebody asked this yesterday, you know, do you, do you have to you know, be an actor or can you just, you know, be a voice actor? There are some people that are just voice talent. Um, they usually have like a pretty unique voice, pretty versatile, they can do a lot of accents, they can, you know, do a lot of different things. But 96% of voice actors are just actors in general. You can put them in on stage, you can put them in front of a camera, they're comfortable wherever. 
Um, it's it's just it's just wise to cover all your bases and then you know want to do stage and film and movies and voiceovers and then you know find yourself in one of those areas for just a little while. So I think all of it. Anybody that wants to be a voice actor, do all of it. That's my advice for the day. That don't eat your vegetables. <laughs> hug, hug me. Sign yes. A request? <laughs> was, that, was that a don't do it? Okay, I won't do it. <laughs> oh, please, please. Okay, what's your request? So, I know you know what happens at the end of the series with Ed, right? The end of the series of what? With Ed. With Ed, yeah. to Ed at the end of the series and I was his lover, what would I do? How would I, what would I say? I would pimp smack him. Edo! Bad miniskirt. We're talking about a grown man and a 13-year-old boy. <laughs> little, little weird. Oh, excuse me, 15. Because that's legal. Uh, that's just wrong, people. That's just wrong. Yes. I think some people have already heard this story. <laughs> Uh, so the first con I ever went to, I think was in 2000 and...